welcome to this reaction video where I'm going to look at something totally uh, outside the domain of quantum grammar, i.e. correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Um, I'm going to be looking at JW.org, Jehovah's Witnesses website, and I'm going to look at it through the lens of correct sentence structure and examine some of the claims that are being made in plain English on this page. So, we see we got the war machine right off the bat here. Ooh, here's a good one. How does God view war? How would you answer that question? Well, I really can't answer that question because I've never had a conversation with God. I've never even met God. Many think that God approves of war. The reason that he commanded some of his worshipers in the past to engage in warfare, the Bible record confirms. Oh, they reason that he commanded some of his worshipers in the past to engage in warfare. Others, however, note that God's son Jesus taught his followers to love their enemies. So they reason that at some point God's view of war changed and that today he disapproves of war. What do you think? Does God approve of warfare? If so, whose side does he take in today's conflicts? Finding the answers to these questions can affect our own view of war. For example, if you knew that God not only approves of war, but also supports the side that you favor. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Well, ladies and gentlemen, to draw your attention, I mean, if you're into this type of thing, I draw your attention to the sixth, what's known as the sixth commandment. Read that commandment. Whatever interpretation you choose to read, there is a general consensus that it's a commandment of not to take another human life, not to extinguish another human life. There are no asterisks. There is no small print. It's a commandment. And if you break that commandment, then you break your God's commandment and you will burn in hell for eternity. There's no fine print or anything on that. <laughs> what is God's name? Well, they just told you what is God's name. What is God's name? Hi, God. Hey, call me what? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I am Jehovah. That is my name. I give my glory to no one else, nor my praise to graven images. Ah, so Jehovah is a glory seeker. He wants to keep all the glory. He's very selfish. Good. Good to know. Good to know. Peace and happiness, faith in God, marriage and family, help for teenagers, activities for children, science in the Bible, history in the Bible. Try our Bible course, request a million, attend a meeting. Is Jesus Christ God? Ooh, that should be a good one. Many people regard Jesus as the most influential person in history. But is Jesus is he Caucasian? God himself? <laughs> or was he simply a good man? <laughs> Many people personally met Jesus, and some of their accounts are found in the Bible, revealing who Jesus really is. For instance, an angel spoke to Jesus' mother about her unborn son and said, Okay, so they're giving evidence of Jesus. They're, they're using an angel. Uh, can I even wrap my head around this, ladies and gentlemen? They're using a character named Mary 
her testimony of meeting an angel who's giving testimony as to who Jesus is. Okay? So it's... One conjecture after another conjecture after another conjecture. This one will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. Son of the Most High. Not only does Jehovah want to keep all of the glory for himself, uh, being that Jehovah is, you know, by process of logic in this context, Jehovah is the Most High, then he must also... Uh, be hoarding all the the edibles and smokables. He's most high. When Jesus was being baptized, God's own voice confirmed Whoa. Jesus' identity. Jesus had abs, bro. This is my son, <laughs> the beloved, whom I have approved. He approved of his son so much that he sent him down here as a human blood sacrifice and to this day those people that receive holy communion participate in symbolic cannibalism still god has given a special assignment to his son to bring everlasting life and happiness to all humankind just as god originally purposed okay i guess we're still waiting for that one aren't we ladies and gentlemen Jehovah's Witnesses, who are we? We come from hundreds of ethnic and language backgrounds, yet we are united by common goals. Above all, we want to honor Jehovah, the God of the Bible and the creator of all things. We do our best to imitate Jesus Christ and are proud to be called Christians. Each of us regularly spends time helping people learn about the Bible and God's kingdom because we witness or talk about Jehovah God and his kingdom. We are known as Jehovah's Witnesses. Frequently asked questions about Jehovah's Witnesses. Ooh, this looks like a good one. No, they're not opposed. They view it as a personal decision. They cooperate with public health officials. Oh, so... Mm-hmm. I see. So, give unto the Lord what is the Lord's, but also give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Ooh, here we go. What do Jehovah's Witnesses believe? God. We worship the one true and almighty God. Bible. We recognize the Bible as God's inspired message. We base our beliefs on all 66 of its books, which include both the Old Testament and New Testament. We are not fundamentalists. Jesus. We follow the teachings and example of Jesus Christ and honor him as our Savior. And as the Son of God, however, we have learned from the Bible that Jesus is not Almighty God, and there is no scriptural basis for the Trinity doctrine. Kingdom of God. This is a real government in heaven, not a condition in the hearts of Christians. It will replace human governments and accomplish God's purpose on earth. Really? Okay. It will take these actions soon. For the Bible prophecy indicates we are living in the last days. It's always the last days, isn't it? It's been the last days for thousands of years now, I think. And it will continue to be the last days. Salvation, deliverance from sin and death is possible through the ras ransom sacrifice of Jesus. So yes, I guess uh, they believe in the human blood sacrifice. Human blood sacrifice. They believe in heaven. They believe in earth. Well, that's good, because that's where they live. They believe in evil and suffering. This began when one of God's angels rebelled. The angel, who after his rebellion was called Satan and devil. What about Lou? Louis. Lucifer. Persuaded from the first human couple to join him, and the consequences have been disastrous for their descendants. 
In order to settle the moral issues raised by Satan, God has allowed evil and suffering, but he will not permit them to continue forever. Hold up. Hold up. So another way to look at this, ladies and gentlemen, this mythology here, this mythos, is that you had this supreme being that was hoarding all of the glory and all the edibles and whatever else. And then you had this other dude named Satan or Lucifer, Light Bear, who said, you know what? I want to be on the same geometric level playing field as the Most High. Why can't we be equals? What's wrong with equality? What's wrong with rule one, rule equal? But because the Most High, Jehovah, had that might makes right mentality, he had the bigger guns and clubs, he kicked Lou the hell out. Sound familiar? Death. They believe in death. Well, pff, duh. Uh, if you're born, you're going to die. That's it. People who die pass out of existence. They do not suffer in a fiery hell of torment. Is that right? I thought if you broke the commandments, uh, you were eternally damned. God will bring billions back from death by means of a resurrection. However, those who refuse to learn God's ways after being raised to a life will be destroyed forever with no hope of a resurrection. Is that right? Going to be billions of zombies walking around. You see these zombie movies? <laughs> they believe in family, union of one man and one woman, sexual immorality being the only valid basis for divorce. Oh, really? Okay. Our worship. We do not venerate the cross or any other images. Going by the commandments, of course. Um, what else? They believe in their organization. And I'm sure they believe in the cash flow their organization brings in. Unity, conduct, relationship with others. Hmm. What else? <clears throat> Do Jehovah's Witnesses feel that they are the only people who will be saved? No, many millions lived in centuries past and who weren't Jehovah's Witnesses will have an opportunity for salvation. The Bible explains that God's promise, new world, there's going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and unrighteous. Additionally, now many living yet to begin to serve God, they too will gain salvation. Hmm. That brings to mind... Jehovah's Witnesses believe that exactly 144,000 faithful Christians from Pentecost of 33 AD until the present day will be resurrected to heaven as immortal spirit beings to spend eternity with God in Christ. They believe that these people are anointed by God and become part of the spiritual Israel of God. They believe the 144,000, which they consider to be synonymous with the little flock of Luke 12.32, will serve with Christ as king priests for a thousand years, while all other people accepted by God, the other sheep, composed of the great crowd of Revelation, and the righteous and unrighteous ones, will be given an opportunity to live forever in a restored paradise on earth. Hmm. Well, you know what happens to sheep, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? But here's the thing, and this is really funny because... Um, a conversation I once had with a Jehovah's Witness, I asked them a question with which they had no answer to. I said, if you believe that, that 144,000 faithful Christians will be resurrected to heaven and blah, 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 yada, 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 and you're out here trying to recruit me, aren't you afraid that I will take your place in the 144,000? They had no answer to that, and they never came back again. Another funny story, when I moved to a different state, um, the Jehovah's Witnesses left literature on my front porch. I syntaxed it and sent it back to them, and I left my phone number if they had any questions. Well, they called me, and I set up an appointment. I said, yeah, come on over. An older gentleman came with a very young gentleman, very neatly dressed, suit and tie. Came out on the porch, I welcomed them, the younger man 
came forward. Obviously, he was an apprentice of some sort. And I pulled out my CPAS C treaty and I credentialed myself. And I said, do you have similar credentials? At that point, the older gentleman stepped forward and pushed the younger gentleman back and said, I have a driver's license. I said, is that your driver's license? And he said, yeah. I said, I don't know. It says Michigan driver's license on it. It doesn't say your name and then a driver's license. So it looks like it's Michigan's driver's license. And he looked at me in a very puzzled and sort of concerned way. And then I laughed and I said, I'm just joking with you. And then we started talking. And I started talking about facts. And I started asking them, what is a fact to you? How do you certify what a fact is? And then we, you know, looking at the grass, at the porch, at the concrete, at a chair, these things we can certify as facts. And we also certified what love is. Love our spouses, our parents, our, our children. Okay, we can certify what love is and we can prove those things as very tangible concepts and things like that that we can prove to other people as well. Which then led me to God. I said, so we've created a nice little list of boxes to tick off for things that are facts. How many boxes does God tick on that list? Boy, did that throw them for a loop. The older gentleman said, well, it doesn't really have to do with facts. It has to do with faith. Believing in the unseen, a feeling in your, I said, hold on, let's differentiate that. Not a sensation as in one of the five senses that you can certify things with. It's more like an impression, right? An assumption. He's like, yeah, yeah. I said, okay, so your religious belief is not based on facts. It's based on assumption. He said, yeah. I said, well, there you go. I said, I only participate with facts. Shook his hand. I said, if you ever want to learn this grammar, and I showed him my card, I said, you can contact me, and uh, you can learn to convey your claims as facts. He thanked me. They left and never came back. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this video. This is a little bit different video. Uh, for this channel uh, what i'm trying my volition behind doing this video was to hopefully get some people to start thinking about facts if they really want to learn this grammar it is so important and critical to the safety ages and bulwark of your vessel to be able to certify your claims as facts and if you're going into these venues with concepts that are not facts but rather assumption presumptions and opinions Things may not turn out the way you think they will. That's why it's very important to navigate on the facts. And that's what this video was about. That's why I did the forensics on the website. And that's why I told you that story about my experience with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, if you do want to learn correct sentence structure, you can contact me at the email address below. I am not in any way, shape or form trying to discourage, discourage anyone from participating with a spiritual um, for lack of a better term, belief system, a spiritual system of enrichment. Whatever you're doing personally for that, that's, that's up to you, okay? What I'm conveying here has to do with correct sentence structure. I am no way ripping or insulting. It's not my volition to insult anyone's religion or spiritual participations. My point here is to show you that you must have closure on what a fact is and that must extend across the board to all of your facts in your construct just so that you're clear on what is a fact and what is not. Sure, you can participate with possibilities and probabilities, but you must be able to separate the facts from those. Feel free to hit the join button at the bottom of your video if you'd like to become a member of this channel and access some content not available to the public. Tell me in the comments if you like videos like these. Maybe I'll do some more of them and look at some other religions, maybe Mormonism or Islam. 
really they'll all go the same way as this one did pretty much but uh, I do appreciate your comments and your participation thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one